So if I stream it on this computer, is it going to bog down bandwidth or anything? Probably not. I don't know. I just want to respond to comments. I guess we'll see. I don't think it would. It would stop it before it does anything. Okay. Catastrophic. Starting soon. We may want to just go with the flow. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you can maybe keep trying to work on getting YouTube up, but yeah, I mean, just roll with just roll with uh, Facebook for now because they're there, so. Okay. So turn to close up view on Facebook for now. There you go. Okay, that's good. All right. So we're going to tie a few tailwater patterns tonight. And. Uh, <clears throat> This first one is a mayfly nymph, and it's uh, one that we have back here in the shop, too. It's, uh, it's been one I've worked on for a few years, just kind of messing around with different styles. And um, This is a fun one to tie. I mean, you could probably get away with something that's half as complex as this, but it's a fun one. So, I mean, if we were going to try to tie the easiest fly, it would be putting a piece of cheese on there and just fishing it like that. So, anyway, what I do is I start off with my thread on the, the front and so we're gonna tie this in a little backwards and this is so I can get a hot spot and so I start off with my uh, fluorescent orange or fire orange thread and now I'm gonna grab a piece of uh, thin skin that I was playing with here and so thin skin is just a kind of a nylonish uh, paper backed product and you want to cut a piece that's about as wide as your uh, bead. So this is a size 18 hook. This is a fully mill um, 3550 or 350-50. So it's a, I think this is the ultimate dry fly hook. But it's also good for nymphs. It has a wide gap. <clears throat> so I kind of measure that off, make sure I've got the right width, because I want it to cover the bead just, um, just enough to, to cover it, but not to wrap all the way around it. And then I'm going to cut this to a point. And that'll allow me to tie this on. So if uh, you're, you're always used to tying materials with your left hand and then using your bobbin with your right, but we're going to do this opposite way because I got to tie this coming off the front. So with my right hand, I'm going to lay the tip of that material right uh, on the eye of the hook. And then with the left hand, come in here if I can see and tie that. Whoopsie. We'll tie that in eventually. That would be me left handed. <laughs> well, these, this is a, a weird angle for my eyes, too, so yeah. I'm getting old and decrepit. Anyway, we're going to pinch that on there. <laughs> That's nasty looking. Okay. Curtis has only been tying flies for like three weeks. I've never tied this fly before, actually. The video was a, a hand double. <clears throat> so enough that I can get, I'm going to trim that off a little so I can cozy that bead up there. And you don't want to give it too many turns because uh, we want to, well, we, we're going to give it a little bit of room for a hot spot in front of it. And then I'm just going to whip finish right there. And I guess I'm going to use my Petagene whip finisher. Now you don't have to whip finish if you if you don't want. You could just continue back and tie the whole fly in this color thread, but 
we'll uh, we'll do the hot spot like I normally do. There we go. Are we live on YouTube now? Well, we were, but it was unlisted, so now it's working. Oh. <laughs> so now it's not unlisted anymore. Okay, now we're going to grab the olive thread, or you could use brown, or you could use black, and then. <clears throat> So you kind of notice the bead comes up right against the where that uh, thin skin is mounted. And ultimately, I'm going to pull this over the top and kind of create this uh, uh, wing case. But we'll attach our olive thread here. And first thing is to tie in some Coque de Leon and, uh, for the tail. And so I'll just grab a few Coque de Leon fibers. This is actually off of a wing, so this isn't like your typical saddle or neck, but it's got some good modeling to it. And so the, the fly we're going to create in two parts. The first part is going to be the abdomen, which we'll use some uh, holographic tinsel and uh, coat it with some Loon uh, UV resin. And so I'm just going to tie Right, that in the thorax, and you want to make sure that the tail is the right length, about the body length. And then I'm going to work my way back right to the bend of the hook. Um, one, you know, other note here with the tails a lot of uh, beginning tires, I don't know why, it's probably a matter of not getting the proportion seared in your brain, make the tails too long or too short. So always base your proportions as much as you can off of a shank length or the body length or a bead, something that's repeatable, especially if you're going to tie a bunch of these. That way you don't have one that's a, an inch long tail and another one that's a quarter inch long tail. So we're going to tie in two things for the main part of the body. We're going to use some flashaboo, and, and there's nothing super important about the color. This is a, I think this is the dyed black, even though it doesn't look black. And then we're going to use some Beavis holographic tinsel and medium. <clears throat> and so I'll just uh, snap off a couple pieces of each. And so the reason I do this, and the, the original design of the Aerobatus, I used some uh, V-rib, not some V-rib, I used uh, like scud back. And so I, I wrapped that up and then just pulled a wire over it. But then I coated it with resin so that it would be nice and smooth. The other thing to consider, if you've ever seen like the uh, Czech nimpers or French style nimping guys, they'll use these, uh, or Spanish are the ones that use them. Uh, they're called pertigones, which is a coated, very slick nymph with a bead head, and they drop really fast. They don't have any nothing to buoy them up in the currency. That's kind of the idea on this one. So besides the bead, we're going to uh, put in a little bit of, of uh, coating on the body to make it sink a little quicker. What's the name of this fly? This is called the Aerobatus, as in aerodynamic. It's fancy, but anyway, so we're going to tie in the flashaboo first, and then our tinsel will come in second. So that's uh, your typical first on, last up. So if you're, if you're an accountant, you've heard of FIFO, which means first on, or first in, last out last in, first out, whatever. Um, so that's a similar principle. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Just waiting for Cheech to say something. Oh, get enough of that. <laughs> this is fishing. This is fishing. Dude, and I don't have my half of pliers. How am I going to wrap stuff up the hook? You know what I got for you? You want some? Yes. Here. My... You, know, you know what I got, too? It better be CNF. That's all I wrote. Right on. So we got our CNF hackle pliers. So Only what kind of streamer is this? this time? You would not even know a streamer uh, if this hackle plier. You guys know what involved. happened? Cheech found out that we were doing a midge event, and he went to Mexico for a couple days. <laughs> With his screw of fillers. Down in what Mexico? <laughs> so now we're just going to wrap this up and uh, do some housekeeping. Clip off the the uh, excess there. <clears throat> now on the body, if uh, if I want, I can use my little rotary feature and rotary this right up. Now, you notice that I'm not holding my thread. If uh, my thread is actually helping me out there because it's going to build up some of the bulk. So that's fine. You give that a flip. That's another win for these CNF bobbins. 
is that they have some weight to them. So as opposed to your other types of bobbins, um, they'll hold their material on as you're wrapping it. Or when you're doing a, a wrap around and you've got to flip it and let go of it, that extra weight will actually help keep your materials on the hook. It, it's not, I didn't even think about it until I started messing around with it and started realizing. So anyway, now I'm going to take my um, flashaboo and then just barber pull that up so it's going to create a ribbing about four wraps. Same deal. And then give that a cut. So I'm going to stop it right there. Somebody's texting me, Brandon. Uh, Other probably, Brandon. It's probably Cheech. It's Cheech and Brandon. Um, the thorax. So before I do the thorax, I need to coat it. And so I've got some fluorescing UV clear fly finish. And we had a few times on the water this last year that I'm a believer in this specific stuff here. Because we had times we're fishing the same spot, same pattern. The only difference was this on the fly. And it was a pretty big difference of what we were catching. And I, uh, Besides, I was a lot. It was a lot more skilled fishermen involved. But. So uh, put a little on there. And now I'm just going to take my bodkin and kind of clean that up. Rub that around, and then we'll zap it with the old <clears throat> torch. Torch. The fuego. And see that lights up right there. Fish can't resist that when they shine their their eyes have this UV light in them when they click on and off. <laughs> <laughs> and I got some waterfront property, or oceanfront property, still in, in Arizona. Um, okay, and then. The thorax, I'm going to use another one of my favorite materials, which is hairy eye stub. And this is going to be the brown color. <clears throat> so the kind of a betas flavor. If you're going to go PMD, you probably, so you can do this exact same thing in PMD color. And uh, just a little bit of dubbing enough to form our thorax here. And this is going to create our final tie down point. So I've got my thorax tied in. Now is the final thing. I just bring my wing case over the top, and I, I just do this right behind the bead. And you gotta kind of make a wide loop so that you don't uh, flip that skin up. I'll do that again. And now I'll just whip finish that. What thread do you use in there, Turner? This is a uh, UTC 70. Now I go back and forth between UTC 70 and Danville 70, Montana Fly 8 aught, UTC. So not really married to anyone in particular. And then the, the last thing I do is I'm going to cut this straight across um, just behind the thorax. And then I'll even come in and give it a little mayfly looking V. Like so. Okay, now I've created a little bit of a divot there. It's sucked down into the, the uh, dubbing. But now we'll make it nice and even again by putting some more resin in that little spot and coating the whole front or the whole top. Now you can kind of see there how it, let me kind of see it on my camera. It lights up, but so the, the top of that's got that profile of a mayfly with a wing case, and then it's nice and slender. It's going to sink really fast. Um, ice stub is a good little fishy attractant. So I'll just fish that. I can fish it as a, a dropper behind um, a mayfly dry if I want. Um, it's great if you're using it in like a Euro rig, if you're using big stonefly or maybe a worm pattern, you can drop that in there behind it. Um, we actually had a lot of people that were, when we opened a couple months ago, we started selling these. And, uh, these have been really popular on the Provo lately, um, probably because they don't work. But anyway, so that's the Aerobatus. Any questions? Any comments? Is anybody being smart alecky online that we need to? Uh, just, just Cheech. Besides Dan? On YouTube, there are 
pretty chill. And on Facebook, they're just they're just concerned for your well-being right now. <laughs> they're just saying, so good to see you, Curtis. Go, Curtis. <laughs> so it's almost like they're, well, yeah. they're concerned for your <laughs> happiness and well-being, which is concerning. Well, in that case, we need to tie a midge. So um, you still good to tie some? Sure, man. Okay. So Brandon's going to tie after me. Brandon is going to tie what's arguably the most popular yet wide. secretive Everyone's looking at your face right now. You I made you go wide. <laughs> secretive pattern in the world. So stay tuned for that one. Um, this is another one that Cheech hates. Oh wait, I did your time. So this this is called the foam merger. And the secret uh, sauce here. What the heck is that? Oh, I'm like, <laughs> we got an echo in here. What are we doing? <laughs> the um, it's called Easy Magic Dub. And uh, so this is the shock slash body of the nymph, the emerger, I should say. And um, I'll pro I probably average about a size 22 on these. So this this is not a big. Fly, but I'm going to tie them in an 18 so that you can see them a little better here. Um, usually use something like a Tiemco 2488 or this is a Daiichi 1150, which I kind of like because the um, it's a, it's got a shape that kind of flows well with this pattern. Now, this is one, if I'm teaching people to tie midges that have never tied before, this is literally one of the easiest patterns on the planet. The first few versions I tried to make really, really complex, put wings on there and different things. Um, the one that I actually settled on was literally two materials. It was the Easy Magic Dub and Evisote, which Cheech is going to bring me in a second. Evisote in black? Yeah, just a little snippet. Eight inch. Doesn't matter the thickness, I'll cut it down. <clears throat> What's that? Eighth inch, right? Yeah, eighth inch is usually one I use. Sweet stuff. Yeah, so um, the easy magic dub, and, and the story behind this one is uh, Gracias, is kind of interesting. I, when I was in college, uh, I would go to the Green River in Utah a lot, and the there was a couple of spots there that just had these incredible midge hatches, and I, had, I was fairly new to midge fishing and so I was going there every week and we were getting our butts handed to us by these trout just they were coming up for hours and we catch maybe one or two so I was standing there this dude walks up one cast one fish and I'd been there for three hours and I caught one maybe two and I was like you got to be kidding me so I just packed up my stuff started walking off and he comes he actually asked me how I was doing and so I struck up a conversation with him and beat him up and took his flies. No, I uh, I asked him what he's using because that was it was crazy. Oh, and by the time I got over there to him, he caught another one. So it wasn't a fluke. And what he showed me was a palomino midge. I don't know if you've seen palominos. Um, so I started fishing a palomino. and didn't do that great. That It was actually that next week. Um, so I started doing a little bit more research on how the bugs hatch. And I realized that when I've seen a lot of these trout, they were not taking dries. They were not taking them on the surface. They were taking the emergers. And more than that, they were taking trapped emergers that were in the surface film, or at least they were in that stage. So I just tied a little bit of foam on the front, found, well, I was using ultra chenille at first until I found this stuff, which is a lot finer. And this was the ticket. So the next time I went back to that same spot, I literally worked my way up the bank and caught probably 20 or so fish in my first hour there, just working up things. <laughs> While Cheech caught zero. <laughs> throwing streamers. So we just, uh, on this one, it's going to be, like I said, this is a simple, this is the simplest version. Uh, the one on our YouTube and the tutorial we have on there. Oh, dude, we forgot to start Insta Instagram Live. Oh, Sorry, Instagram. Sorry, Instagrammers. Um, I, I actually have some 
red tinsel wing buds or yeah wing buds um, if you can throw those in there for the bigger size so they don't really work that well for the smaller stuff because it's so small so I'm just gonna take the uh, magic dub and I'm gonna go about the body length so I'm halfway up the shank of the hook I'm gonna go body length back that same length at that halfway tie-in point and you need to make sure this is pretty snug if it's not it'll roll on you and then I'm going to come in here and trim it off. So that's going to be the, the shuck or the body, depending on how the fish are looking at it. And the other thing that I have added to the mix now is I'll put in a little bit of dubbing. And so I'm just going to grab some black. This is hairy ice dub, but you could use um, ice dub is what I normally use. And this is just going to create a little thorax leggy area and go right up to basically right before the eye of the hook. Hey Curtis. Yeah. Somebody is asking, I just started tying and having have trouble measuring my tails correctly. So maybe talk about that on this one and on the previous one that you tied. Oh yeah. So on that the previous one, as I mentioned, the the way we measure the tails is I usually do it in terms of the length of a hook shank or or a certain section of the hook, like the eye of the hook. So in general, in order to not have what Cheech and I affectionately call the fatty long tail, which is a fly that's totally out of proportion, uh, you'll see a lot of people tie a, a, a tail that's two times longer than it should be. I mean, if you look at the naturals, they don't grow tails that they don't, their tails don't just keep growing, they actually stop. And so uh, that's how I measure the tail, it's against the body length usually. Same with the wings. Same with thorax, most of your sizing and proportion, uh, and, and it may vary. Dry fly is a little different than nymphs, but in general, um, you measure it against some aspect of the hook. Uh, if you're going to do a lot and you're going to prep a lot of materials, sometimes I'll create a little measuring station on my desk, and that way I can just bring a material up, clip, 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 and just do a bunch of them at once so I don't have to worry about it. But that uh, is a good question. Chuck Bingham's asking if you stole my shirt. Chuck, oh, it was I was I would hope to have a, a, a shirt from Chuck. Hold on, hold on, we gotta go wide so you can see how the shirt to see if it you, need to, you need to kind of do, stand do a little up. once over. We go wide. You can see that is uh, definitely Cheech's shirt. Yeah, see, I got it goes down to my knees. I'm husky. I'm husky. Nice. <laughs> well, and it's it's even covering up my favorite shirt, which has crabs on it. No, that's my the rooster one's a favorite. Chuck Bingham is a good guy. <laughs> good old Chuck. Maybe we'll see you in a couple months, Chuck. Um, all right, so the, the last thing on this is the foam. And so I'm just going to grab a little tiny chunk of this episode. Now, I tried a bunch of different foams. I tried craft foam. I tried just the, like the fly tank foam we carry here, Crosslink. The Evasote foam floats it the best by far. And the other th reason I like it is it holds floating. And another key to this, especially in colder weather, is get you some Loon Loxa floatant, the best floatant I think that there is. Um, this foam will suck that in there and hold it nice. So it'll float very nicely. <clears throat> and let me show you the way this is going to be oriented. So I'm going to take the foam and I'm going to make sure a chunk about the eh, about the size of my thorax. And then I'm going to have that overlap the eye of the hook. So your eye of the hook is going to be kind of buried for a minute. And then you want to give it two or three good snug wraps, enough so that when I pull down on it, it doesn't roll around the hook. If it rolls around the hook, it means you haven't tugged it hard enough or you got too much on there. And then I'm going to pull on the back half here, and I'm going to snip that right at the base. And so it kind of creates the, the little empty space there. And then I whip finish it right here. I used to try whip finishing around the eye, but there's no need. So we're just going to whip finish that. And we're good, we're good on that. Okay, now the foam, believe it or not, I haven't found that the size scares the fish away. So it's not so much of a deterrent than you would think because 
if I'm looking at the size of the bugs, I mean, this is also going to be bigger than the bugs themselves usually. So this, and it's going to float like this. So if you can just imagine if you threw this in the water, the foam is going to have the floatant and it's going to float. Do not put any floatant on the tail or the thorax and it will orient itself just like that in the water, pretty much consistently. Um, another little trick that I use, and Brandon's going to show you, you're going to do the all. <clears throat> Brandon's going to show a pattern after that that I use for a dropper on this. And the nice thing about a dropper, an unweighted dropper, is that it will help it hang that orientation even more. So you want that vertical or near vertical because that's what the fish are keying on. They don't want the dry fly and they often don't even want the pupa that's still pupating. They're just waiting until the bug gets to that point because it has its biggest struggle to get out because they're small bugs, surface tension. If they can't get out, they're snacks. So anyway, that's the foam merger. And just like the aerobatus, they're both on the website. Uh, we've got material lists to them. And, and then here in the shop, we've got all the stuff too as well. And um, I've got a discount on a piece of episode right here. <laughs> I'm serious. Give it away at the end of the yeah, we'll, we'll give it away. Do we'll do a, a, a drawing. The drawing is see who likes Cheech more than Curtis. Raymond, and then we'll cut it up for both people. No one's getting foam now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good on. 22 is the best size you figured on that? Yeah, I tie them from 26s down to probably 18s and six, you know, some 16s. There was a day me and Cheech were fishing this high mountain lake and the the midges were gigantic. Well, I mean, for midges, they were a 16, good good size yeah. 16. And I was using a 16 on that, and we were just. What size is that you just tied? This is an 18. That's an 18. And yeah. that with the what was that, that with the, the easy does? Awesome betas too. So. Yeah. Oh, and that's another thing is when they transition from midges to. Oh, see ya. Betas in the spring. <laughs> finders keepers. <laughs> it just, it just shot. It shot. I, I knew that was going to happen because I could see it was at the uh, at a weird angle and I hadn't secured it all the way in there. Yeah. <laughs> you found it? Yeah. It's wow. yours. You have it. Yeah. Yeah. Miners keepers. Man. This is how we go. Um, so when they transition from midges to betas in the spring, I'll fish that at the first sign of betas, even when I'm seeing the bugs on the water and they're taking them. That will outfish my betas patterns every time. It's the craziest thing. The fisher must be dumb or something. But yeah, okay, 16 to 22. Though. Now on the, on the Provo or any tailwater where there you know a lot of these streams in Utah, Colorado, the West, um, then I'm doing 20s, 22s. Yeah. So what was that, the Archie hook again? That was 1150. 1150. But you could use the uh, 1130 and or the 1120 if you wanted to. It's a little thicker. I like the 1130 a lot because it's got a little bit of an offset hook point. And it's lighter hook. It hooks fish really well. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, go wide and then switch. Cool, cool. Now you're just the wide. Yeah, yeah. so you just click on the black, click on the wide. You're good. That's all you got to do. Yeah. It's Full easy. Does what? No. This I pass the mantle to you. Do you guys want to see how a shirt shrinks? Because <laughs> yeah, I'm skinny, dude. You know this shirt should not. Being big B. <laughs> so we like tacos, guys. Well, tacos are, you know, they're great. Actually, yeah, let's see good. what the battery's doing here. Check around. Oh, we're seventy-six percent. Nice. How much do we have? Seventy-six percent. Oh yeah. yeah. Christmas miracles. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up, everybody? So I'm Brandon. If you haven't met me already, I work here at the shop, right? So met most of you guys. You guys all look familiar. So I'm going to tie a couple midges. They asked me to tie ones that are not their patterns. So because, you know, they're sick of seeing their own stuff. Which I don't blame because they're all garbage, you know. So, <laughs> so we're going to tie probably the easiest to tie midge pattern ever and probably like one of the most effective. Like this thing is, I always have like 47 of these in my box because they just always work. Um, so to tie this up, you're going to need to... To, to uh, make a journey on over to the Walmart, and you got to find yourself some. Uh, was it Coates and Clark or yeah, Coates and Clark? Coates and Clark. Coates and Clark. This is the summer brown color, and you can see that we have kind of an unhealthy obsession with fancy bobbins here. I purposely have like this garbage bobbin that I use on it, and I kind of like it because it almost frays it a little bit as I'm tying it, and it kind of makes it a little bit 
buggier, so I do dig that. So what um, is Coates and Clark? So it's just sewing thread. So you can see sewing that thread. Yeah, just like good old sewing thread. Um, this also works really good in like red. Just go there, look at the different colors that you see there. You're going to need two threads to tie this bug. That's pretty much it. So what so, colors are you get? Uh, I like the, this is probably the one that I know I use the most. I don't know about you guys, but this is called Summer Brown. Um, I had to go to the Walmart in Heber to find this because they were out at the Lehigh Walmart. What was up with that? But this is a, this is my favorite color of that. So. Um, for a hook, I like always like a straight eye merger dry fly hook on this guy. So this is a Daiichi 1110. Um, we're going to tie this in an 18, but this bug is super easy to tie down to like, they make this hook in a 26, and you can tie it down to a 26 super easy. So, Cool. You want to zoom in there? I guess I don't, I'm not paying any attention here. Everybody's going to be able to see what kind of camera you use now, Curtis. It's a good thing I just got to go. Yeah, we just got to see. Our one. secrets are out. <laughs> <coughs> there we go. We're good, yeah. All righty. So with this guy, you're going to start kind of in the halfway point on the hook like this, and then you're going to go forward. And why we do this is to help build taper on it. And I just made sure that the thread was kind of flat before I started, and then I'm going to work back. That is a real buggy looking thread, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And then I do one wrap overneath, over my uh, tag in there, okay? And then I'm going to cut that out there. Now this thread, it'll actually lay pretty flat when it's when it's not corded up. So with this, uh, well, the other thing about this uh, this heavy bobbin I have here that's not the best bobbin in the world is it spins it really easy. So you want a bobbin that you can spin pretty well. And I'm going to cord this thread up and make my way all the way to the back with just touching wraps there. And then I'm going to cord it up again. And then touching wraps. And you can kind of see how that adds that segmentation as when I cord it up. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. It's probably not catching up perfect, but. And I'll just keep cording that up by spinning that clockwise. Right up to that point there. Now you can whip finish this here. Generally, what I'll do is I will just uh, get my thread tied on there. just let it wrap around the thread like that capture that instead of having to it's a pretty thick thread so hey, this Brandon, is just a what's up they're asking if you're on the Walmart pro staff I'm on the Walmart pro staff and explain to them why we don't uh, <coughs> sell or why we're in a fly shop and we're using like sewing craft from Walmart um, These guys are asking why you're you're working in a Fly shop, why are you tying those stuff from Walmart? Because I'm on the Walmart Pro Staff. I like them sugar free apple pies, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's all good. You know, this is a, this one's been around a while. It's a good pattern. And if you have to go to Walmart to tie a good pattern, so be it, you know? Okay, and then literally all we're going to do is just take this thread here and just build a little black head on this guy. And the reason that I do that tie off instead of whip finishing it is when you start tying this pattern down to like, 26 and stuff like that. You just build too much bulk with finishing in my opinion. I mean, there's a lot of people that can do it, but I don't got that skill set, so I just trap the thread like that. And you can use whatever black thread your preference is on here. So we got that little head built up. That looks about right there. And then, oh, I gotta use the fancy whip finisher. Cheech. I don't whoa. think I, I, this is not, we're never gonna finish this now, guys. Whoa, 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 no. <laughs> You don't have to be subjected to European Union labor, all right? Get rid of that. There we go. There. Hey, I got one down. That's made in America. <laughs> and then I like to take a little bit of just the whatever. That comes out fast. Oh, yeah, you cut the tip on that. No, I almost, cut the tip on that. I almost just, like, destroyed this whole thing. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> Somehow they It got jacked up in the middle of the bus. So I just add a little bit of resin to that, to the black part on that, just to have one seal it, and two, it adds a little gloss there. Do you have a like, name for that fly, Brandon? That's called the Young Special. I think it's from, what, the Sam so, River? Yeah, what? a guy named Andy Kim, yeah. who if you go on Google Andy Kim Young Special, there's a lot of information mm -hmm. about it. He kept the secret, the thread secret for years and years, and then our buddy Rick Takahashi, I don't know, it was 10 years ago or so, maybe more, published a, uh, an article in Fly Fisherman about the thread he used, and it's the Coates and Clark. 
and we I knew somebody else had told me what it was, and we and we're pretty sure that's what it was. Andy Kim came out after that, and I think it said it wasn't the exact thread, but I don't think it's that big a deal. It's that style. It's the braided, you know, roped segmentation look. I have seen him fish it on the green, and he's very good, and that fly can hunt. So This is an awesome dropper on, like, any dry midge pattern, like whether you like to fish a griff and snap even, you know, anything like that. Little unweighted midges for tiny dries are awesome. So Hey, Big B. What's up? So Matt Nicoletti says, I enjoy the beard, Brandon. <laughs> There you go. Show, you gotta get that close to the bite. Yeah. Well, I can. <laughs> we can zoom out. Yeah, they, they, no everybody knows I got a pair already. <laughs> we all good. So yeah, that's the Young special. Sweet one. How do you spell that? Y O N G. Young special. You got it. So another one when I was thinking about what to tie tonight mm -hmm. and not using these guys as patterns. So I was thinking about like my various fishing adventures and like what what, what midge patterns like I have to have in my box and this was another one. Uh, I I've seen a bunch of like variations of this and basically it's just like an opal midge, right? So opal tinsel and some peacock and a glass bead and that's really all there is to it. Um, before I moved to Utah County, I was a uh, I fished the Weber a lot and this bug is like probably my Weber saver, right? Like this bug will always catch fish on the weaver when I need something too. So, um, Usually I tie this on like an 1120. This is an 1120 and a 16. Generally it wouldn't be tied this big. Just is going to make it easier for one, for me to tie with the vise so close to the camera and two for everybody to see. And then uh, just a silver line bead and a 1120. My favorite size in this is, just, is a 20. So Say hi to Instagram. What's up, Instagram? Oh, we're already Instagram. busting 100 users now. Oh, my goodness. Instagram's live. Instagram's, Instagram's going crazy nuts. <laughs> just joking. It's just okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this I just use the small size Opal Mirage tinsel. Sell this stuff in the shop, obviously. And the Opal's fishy stuff. I mean, And for the Instagrammers, we're tying some midge and tailwater patterns. We forgot about you guys because it's yeah, not a very uh, What's that? common streaming platform. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got the update today. I didn't even notice yeah, it before that. So anyway, there's a bunch of hearts on the screen. They must love Brandon. I know. I'm sure. That's Brandon. Know. He's our uh, shop specialty ninja. Something like that. Okay. And the cool thing about this guy here, and this is, uh, I usually downsize on thread on this bug. I'm, i got to leave this 16 out here. And now I'm going back to the fancy bobbin because I don't want a bobbin that frays my thread anymore. So, but if you do have one of those bobbins that fray thread, you know, at the house, everyone's got one, right? Don't throw it away. Save it for your young specials. Okay. So the cool thing about this guy here is I have discovered from tying this that you don't really need to, you don't need to dress the whole hook very much because you're just going to tie everything right up here at the front. I'll show you how. So I'm going to tie in that small oval tinsel. You can also use the opal flashaboo on smaller ones. So if you um, are tying like, you know, sub 20 on this, sometimes it's easier to get the, the I think it's flashaboo 3005. It's the, it's the, it's the one that has like the black packaging on it. But uh, no, nope. it comes like in a package like that though. But so what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to wrap this down the band. And I... I'm not a big rotary guy, believe it or not. So I like to do this stuff by hand just to get the reps. Well, plus on that shape. Or I break it on the hook like that. Oh, Ooh, we're yeah. going to break away from, uh, here's a break. We're gonna, so Cheech over there. Your wife says, stop picking your nose. She's the one that picks nose, I'll tell you that right now. That's the first time I've ever broke anything on the hook point, I swear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cheech does it all the time, but yeah, I'm a professional. Swear, and then Curtis has to bleep it out. Yeah, we can't edit this one out because I do that about 47 times in every video. But you guys, you know, movie magic, you know. Steven Spielberg takes care of that. And then we're gonna palmer that forward. And I just do that because it keeps it nice and thin. I don't have to build any thread bulk, you know. Instead of having to, you know, build a thread base and then tie in the thing all the way down and then palm it up. Two wraps of that, even though you're wrapping over itself, is still thinner than that. So, Okay. 
And then a trick I found with the UV resins is I'm going to go ahead and put a little coat on this if I don't get them everywhere. So we're just going to coat that body there. And I'm going to leave that wet like that. And then I'm going to take a piece of peacock here. I'm going to find a smaller hurl. And I'm going to tie that in. And the cool thing is with it being, with the UV resin being left wet on there, now when I tie this off in Palmer and I zap it, it kind of binds to the peacock underneath it a little bit. So that way when fish start chewing at it and stuff like that, it doesn't damage as much. Luckily, these are a fast tie, so sometimes it's easier just to hey, Brandon, tie it doesn't. What's up? Will you tell the people what this, uh, what this pattern's called? I don't. I just noticed the opal midge, so I don't know if it has anything else. Midge. Yep. So we'll tie that off. And before I whip finish, I'll go ahead and zap that stuff now. Now I got a normal whip finisher, so I'll be able to do this. Creatures of habit, you know. Can't learn how to use new tools. Cool. So you guys can see that there. Um, this one fishes really, really well as a dropper too. So when I'm fishing stuff like, um, you know, just like your standard midge clusters and stuff like that, or even a bigger bunny midge will hold this up just fine with the, in the smaller sizes. And I don't know if you guys have ever been in that situation. I run on this on the lower all the time where you're like, you see all these fish rising everywhere. You just see them like they're just barely sticking their noses out and you're not, you're throwing everything at them and they're just not eating anything on top. Right. And then what I'll do is I'll take this guy and I'll fish it under like a yarn indicator, like those New Zealand kits and stuff like that. And I'll fish it maybe like two feet, 18 inches below that. And there's times where this is just the ticket looks like that. They're eating that where it's kind of gassing up like that and emerging at that stage there. So um, if you haven't tried this one out, give it a shot. It's a really, really good one. So. You got 16 odd in there? This is, yeah, 16 odd thread. The Vivas, the Vivas. Superman thread, super skinny, super strong. So, cool. Well, that's all I got. So, okay. Any questions? I guess it's we like can do Instagram. I guess I got a few here. here. One more. How many you got on Facebook? What you got on Facebook there, Cheech? What? Oh, I got, I got, I can do the, the buyout people. Do it. Do we do a buyout people? You guys want to see one more? <clears throat> May as well. We'll switch back to the we sell this one in the shop and this one is the lower killer right here if you fish the lower and you don't have one of these you get both this is called the buy it pupa it's, we have a video for it on the site I wonder who created that one Brandon uh, this was actually my pattern 100 percent so <laughs> I don't have a copper bead oh you got a copper bead look at this okay. look at this kid. Yeah, man. there you go The cool thing about being here is you just steal these guys' stuff. <laughs> so this is another 1120 bug. 1120 is an awesome hook. I don't know if you guys tie with it at all, but as far as a scud hook, this guy is, I've never had one bent out, so. I don't think this hook is a 2.3. Even though it was in the 2.3 bin. That's okay though. It's a bigger? It's a little bit bigger, but it'll work just fine. What side you tied this yeah. one in, Brad? Yeah, so this is a 16 again. Oh, do you have <coughs> my stub? Put down to what? The what? Do you have my stub? With you? I, I know where you Carry want to find stub. That'll work. That'll work just fine. Now we're good over here. Cool. So this is a size 16. You don't have to tie in a 16. You can tie whatever size you want, but I'm a new. Yes. But I'm a noob, so I tie the size. I like 20 in this bug. Matt Hubbard is saying, come on, Minna. What is he What is he harassing me about? Matt what am I, what am I doing wrong? just mad because he's cold. Make it cold jokes because it's like negative 10 in Minnesota right now. Well, it was 57 today. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're in the, yeah. What, did the, what did the guy that came in with Trump, what the chocolate say? We're in the Indian summer. Tim Johnson says your fingers are pretty. My fingers are pretty. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, that's what I go for every single day. So I'm just tying in a piece of small ultra wire, and this is blue, which is probably not a color a lot of people associate with tying midges, but it works. 
So we got a piece of small blue ultra wire there. And then I'm going to get a goose biot. I'm going to get like 40 of them because I'm going to probably break three of them right now. But I got this. No, maybe not. I got the CNS. So, and then we're going to tie this guy in. And I'm going to tie it with the little notch on the biot pointing down. What color are you using there? This is brown, which works for me. Which way do you tie your biots when you want it to be ridgy? Do you tie them down or up? I tie the webby part forward. The webby part forward? I don't, I don't like the up and down. You don't like the, the notch? I don't, well, I don't like going that way because it depends on which way you flip it when you turn the first turn. See, I, I, I do flip it, so that's why I think that. So. I flip it because most normal people do well, you know. Yeah, most people also tie right, like, you know, right-handed or left-handed when they're, you know, left or right-handed, but, you know. And then we're just going to palmer this forward so we can see those ridges. And this is a goose biot, not a turkey biot, because I like the, the turkey biots are a little more translucent, so this works pretty well for this bug. And then we're going to trap that. I don't know how you guys tie with this with this thing so far. I mean, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, it is a little tough to <laughs> get tie used to, stuff. right? <clears throat> Next time we'll just get a chainsaw. The camera. We get the chainsaw out and cut a chunk out of that table so we can move the camera closer. <laughs> and I broke my biot at the end, so I'm gonna see if I can save it, but I don't think I'm going to. But we'll, we'll see. Check this out. Spin that thread. <coughs> then on Instagram, we're gonna check out. My battery's dying. Oh, I got it. Look at that. Saved it. Seek. Okay, so now I'm going to take that blue wire, and in between each one of those ridges, I'm going to run a strand of that blue wire. Got that tied in, couple in front, and then we'll helicopter that out. And then all you got to do is add a little bit of ice dub in the front. Usually we use UV brown on this one. I got hairy ice dub, so I'm going to go with what color are you guys thinking? Cheech and Curtis for a little hairy ice dub. I'm thinking this is either black. No, we'll do brown. Yeah. Brown or brown or brown olive. Yeah, so usually use UV brown ice dub on this. We don't have any right now, but UV brown ice dub has got kind of some cool purple hints in it and stuff like that. So, and then we'll bro we'll go ahead and dub a little ball there behind the eye there. Go ahead and whip finish that one. There we go. And that's the buyout pupa. So this one's been selling really good in the shop, and people have been coming back and just talking about how good this is. This and the Aero Betas have just been lately with customers coming back and telling us what's been successful. Like those are probably been the top two right now. So, um, and like even no matter what midges that you do tie, like if you say you like zebra midges, say you like tying jujube midges, whatever it is, try some blue ones because they they work really really well. So people are saying nice save. Very clutch performance. Dude, I, I broke that bio and I caught it. That was that was that took some skill. No, I'm just joking. Maybe if I was good, I wouldn't have broke it in the first place, but we'll figure it out. But yeah, that's everything we got for y'all tonight. So oh. thanks so much. Any questions? We give uh yeah. Any you guys were real rowdy in the shop here. How do you fish that? Just just, just on it like a nymph rig, you know. Yeah. If you, I fish uh, a lot of time when I'm fishing up in like the Provo and stuff like that. I'll use uh, like tight line techniques, you know, mm -hmm. like the yeah. European style stuff, and I'll fish this just, you know. Just I'll fish like a leader. Like What's that? How long a leader? So it depends, you know. Like that would be like if I'm fishing the like if I'm just fishing a normal nymph rig, you know. Usually it's like a ten foot um, leader in total, and then you know I just adjust the indicator according to how deep the water is fishing. So that's really kind of situational, I guess you could say. So what indicator are you? So if I'm using an indicator, I'll just use either those airlock guys over there that have the screw on them because they don't pinch your line. They look pretty nice there. Airlock? Yep, airlock ones. So if I'm doing big infrigs, I'll do that. Um, if I'm doing kind of like, you know, I was telling you guys earlier with that opal midge, if um, how I hang that kind of like higher in the column for rising fish, um, I like, I'm a big fan of like wool indicators at that point or using uh, 
balloon, uh, the it's like a what's that stuff called, Cheech? You know the the it's like the orange Play-Doh stuff that's from balloon that you can put on your line to oh, bio strike. Bio strike that works pretty good with that it's type like of stuff. Putty type uh, indicator yeah. stuff. I use it a lot. I'm using like uh, fish and flies like thirty inches below it a lot. Exactly. exactly. So when you're fishing stuff like like I was talking about with that opal midge, that bio strike is pretty good. It comes in a couple of colors too. So. Cool, cool. Yeah, I cool. can't believe I saved that 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 bio. That was tight. <laughs> is that that Griffin mongoose? Yeah, this is the mongoose. So uh, this is our our number one right here. This guy. We make hey, a lot Brandon, of the shop. You want to give people a teaser? Yeah, I'll go wide so we can show them. We got something cool to show you all. I'm gonna come in and do it. Actually, I want to come stand by Brando. It's all you, dog. All right, people, this is kind of cool. These are going to be on the site soon, so get ready. But Montana Fly created some boxes for us. Um, so these are the uh, slip foam fly boxes. I actually really like this style. But this one says... Oh, you're on the white Yeah, you got to come down. Right here? Yeah. Dang it. I'm you such a sure. new... Why don't you yeah. move your fly? You're on the white so here. On that I can camp. see it now. Right behind that bug. There you go. Right there. So, so we're not yeah, you don't see it on this one. That's uh, only on the internet. You guys so, are close. You guys are close. Please, please show. Yeah. So this one says brook trout fanatic on it, and on the back it's got a the same brookie picture. I caught that brook trout. You did not. <laughs> and this one is the Rasta box. So stay tuned. These will be available very very soon on the site. Uh, pretty stoked. Um, so. That's it. How much? What? Oh, sorry. Good call. These are 20 bucks a piece. That means if you bought two of them, that would be $40. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning math. All right. Thanks, fellas. Blow a kiss. No way. <laughs> Gross. Bye, social media. See you later.